Sorry, Krishna Prabhuji, I have another question. Yeah, please. Um, how are we to understand that how, um, you know, racism is rampant among human beings, but doesn't seem to be among am animals, the animal species, or is it, and we just, we don't see that, we don't really know it? That's interesting. How would you even see racism in animals as compared to humans? The animals are basically driven by their biological instincts. So biological instincts means they have the urge to, urge to survive, the urge to reprocreate, and then the urge to protect whatever is required for their survival and protection, survival and reproduction. And then that means they need to defend themselves and they need to rest and sleep. So basically, in the scripture perspective, we talk about food, sleep, sex, and strength as four things that define animal behavior. So animals are basically governed by those four reflex, uh, four reflexes, if you want to use the word, drives or reflexes. And everything that they do is based on that. So are there groups among animals? Are there hierarchies among animals? Yes, there are. In the sense that even if say there are some animals we just live alone so lions and tigers they are like lone 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 predators or lone uh, now sometimes the word lone wolves is used for people who are operate alone say so terrorists who attack alone are called lone wolves so there's a difference between animals also but those animals who live together there are some hierarchies within them also and sometimes you, it's not so easy if there is one group of say one group of deer and there's another group of deer for a deer to go from one group to another. They may not be accepted so easy. But the idea is basically they live according to their bodily drives. We humans also have our bodily drives, but we also have a certain level of freedom because we, because we have a certain greater level of free will and an intelligence that has developed based on that uh, exercise of free will. And accordingly, we can conscientiously make arrangements. Say for example, for not only for our, uh, our eating, sleeping, mating, defending, but also not only for our loud, family members or loved ones, but for also for our community. We can plan for the future. Uh, so animals also to some extent plan, but it's not a consciously decided plan. It's just biologically driven. Say for example, certain animals may burrow and create holes in the ground so that in, when the winter comes, they can hibernate over there. But they're not consciously thinking, oh, you know, today is, I have only 15 days, and 15 days winter is going to come, I'm racing against time to complete this. They don't consciously think, that's what they do biologically. Okay? So, they, now, in the case of humans, we have the intelligence by which we can, we can plan, we can arrange, and consciously, so a human being can choose Oh, you know, in the future, I need some savings for that uh, for X, Y, Z. So let me not spend so much now. Let me save right now. That's something which can be planned. So now, because of this higher capacity, higher intelligence, higher free will which we have, we can we can drive this according to different ideologies that we have. So, for example, when uh, the British were ruling uh, ruling India in the Second World War. Now at that time, <clears throat> they had their allies in Australia and Indians were fighting for them. But when there was an acute food shortage, the food, uh, ships loaded with uh, food went from Britain or financed by Britain went to Australia. But India at that time, something like 7 million people starved to death. It was one of the biggest man-made famines that was created. But the British decided not to care for them. In fact, when the uh, the Viceroy in India wrote to the British Prime Minister a telegram and he said that people are dying on the streets of India. Please do something. And then the infamous reply by the British Prime Minister, he said, if people are dying, why is Gandhi still alive? Why hasn't he died till now? So here we see an example that because of, say, certain racial prejudice, because they consider Australians to be still like our own people. The Australians are also whites, whereas these Indians are brown, they are lower level or whatever that they didn't want to protect them. So they, they let them starve. So we could say that our racism is a result of a particular ideology. Or it's, a, it's, a, it's an ideology. 
and to come up with an ideology requires a certain amount of intelligence and a certain level of free will now when i talk about intelligence i'm not talking necessarily in the, in the sense of uh, positively used intelligence it is just that intelligence is there like say when hitler came up with nazism now to develop the nazi ideology requires some intelligence but the intelligence was a horrible intelligence was a destructive intelligence mm -hmm. so to blow up the twin towers to come up with that plan requires intelligence but that is horrendous intelligence so but the point is it's intelligence so there is a certain amount of intelligence and certain amount of free will required for people to come up with ideologies like racism and then to implement those ideologies so that kind of intelligence and free will animals don't have and that's why we won't see racism in uh, animal society just as we won't see marxism or communism or nationalism or any of the other isms like that thank you